Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Sunil here again. So today we are going to discuss about uh, one of the most popular uh, library uh, is called DeepChem, uh, which is a very powerful library for DeepChem tasks uh, in drug discovery, material science and quantum chemistry and biology. So let's explore uh, the cap some of the highlights and capabilities of the DeepChem. And I'll walk through some of the example codes which will help you to get started with the deep game. Okay, so before we start with the deep game, uh, let's understand why deep game and, uh, uh, you know, the capabilities. So deep game is an uh, open source Python library that aims to make, make it easy for anyone, uh, even the basic uh, user or uh, experienced user to use the deep learning task to solve the complex problems in chemistry and material science and biology. It also provides uh, tools for working with the molecular data, uh, loading with your own data set, building or uh, developing a machine learning model or deep learning model, and applying those uh, models to your real world problems. So why DeepChem? So DeepChem is designed to simplify uh, in mind, making it very easy to build and powerful models, just few lines of code, uh, rather than going to the independent modules and uh, developing your own code. It also helps you to provide wealth of inbuilt data sets, models, and uh, the capabilities, tools uh, that make you valuable resource for researchers and developers in this field. And DeepKim provides a variety of data visualization methods based on your input, whether it's a molecule or protein ligand complex, whether you want to visualize them with a fingerprint or descriptors or graph, so everything uh, which is very easy by using DPM. So let's explore uh, some of the features of, uh, you know, let's start with the DeepCam uh, installation first. So to install a DeepCam, all you need to get started with the DeepCam. Uh, first of all, you need to install uh, DeepCam library. So for that, all you need to do is pip install DeepCam. So, uh, or you can also use Anaconda to install the DeepCam library. So, okay, now once you install the data, once you install the DeepCam, uh, make sure you, whether it's working or not, just by, you know, importing DeepCam library. So here I'm uh, example. So import DeepCam as uh, DC. So you can try in the command line and see whether it's installed properly or not. As I mentioned in the introduction, DeepCam provides a interface to the, uh, popular data sets, which are very useful for the drug discovery and other uh, applications. Now, so what are those databases? So, uh, one second. Let's see here. Okay. I think I need to switch on to command line for it. Okay, so DeepKim uh, provides a list of uh, databases that we can see in the next line. So since it's in a PowerPoint mode, uh, sorry, uh, presentation mode, I can't, uh, you know, uh, show you the how to load the data uh, data bases here. So it's a very easy if you want to load inbuilt uh, DeepKim uh, uh, data sets. So all you need to define this function, task, data sets, transformers, uh, which are associated with a MoldNet and uh, MoldNet has a n number of uh, data sets. Uh, so load tax 21 data sets and define planning set and validation set and test set as data sets. So now we can start with the model featureizations, uh, sorry, uh, data set featureization and start with the model building. Right. So the next one, what are the data set bases that comes with the, you know, deep game? So first one is Jink. It comes with a commercial available database, which is useful for virtual screening and uh, drug discovery. And uh, GDB, a small organic database, uh, generally used for molecular generation and property prediction. And MOSIS, you know, uh, that is very useful for um, molecular generation and property prediction again. Uh, so something. Okay, so. QM9, a data set of quantum mechanical calculations. Uh, it comes with the 134 small organic molecule, especially for uh, property prediction, generative chemistry, sample, 
so physical properties uh, and measurements of uh, solubility measurements of small molecule and uh, these are very example uh, data sets and uh, i think there is a one more i think it might have gone in slideshow just give me one minute I think something is wrong. Just give me one minute. So, yeah. So, these are the uh, data, uh, additional databases. That's nothing but of molecular net. It's a collection of nine benchmarking data sets uh, for molecular property prediction, solubility, toxicity, and bioactivity. We'll see some of them in the demo now and QM7 for quantum mechanical calculation, TOX21, we have seen just now, how to load TOX21 data set, and HIV and PDB bind, right? So these are especially for, uh, for you know, protein ligand database of protein ligand complexes and the binding affinity, which is used for molecular docking studies. Right, now, so in the given example, we have seen about, uh, uh, you know, loading a TOX data set. Let's load. Yeah. So you can see, you know, list of data sets that is available with the MolNet, like a Campbell, Campbell 25, Clearance, Clinical Talks, Delany data set, Solubility, and FreeSol, HRV data set, Kegel, and Kinase. So these are the data list of data sets that are available with uh, DeepCam by default. If you want to load your own custom data set, yes, you can do that. That we'll discuss in the coming sessions in even the US uh, patent data sets, right? Interesting, right? We'll discuss in the coming sessions. So that's all about uh, data sets. Now coming to the model featureization. So DeepCam has a variety of uh, data featureization method that convert your raw molecular data into suitable format that can be used for machine learning or DeepCam models. And these are the some of the main uh, featureization methods are highlights or nothing but what you can say. Molecular fingerprints, so extended connectivity fingerprints, which is a very popular fingerprint method that we can see can see here. So uh, in, in order to do that, so from deepcam.feach import circular fingerprint. So here also you can do that and uh, start with the year, year ECFP finger featureization and uh, here I'm actually trying to do circular fingerprint and size 1024 and define the smiles and apply the features. So you can see the featureization in array format, right? So now you can do the same thing for your own data set. Now, so in order to ECFP fingerprint, we, we can also do RDK descriptors, which can be a large number of molecular descriptors that can be, you know, directly load from uh, DeepCam itself and uh, start modeling. And uh, convolutional molecular featureization that that reads the molecule as a graph, and whereas the atom has nodes and bonds as the edges, and which is especially for, uh, you know, uh, graph convolutional network task in DeepCam. And wave featureization especially represent um, uh, molecule as a graph, but includes additional information about atomic pace, sorry, atom pace, and especially it is, uh, you know, designed to work with the wave models in DeepCam. And the next one is uh, uh, grid featureization, especially when you're working with the 3D uh, molecular structures and protein ligand binding data, uh, binding agent prediction tasks, the grid featureizations are very important. And the next one is, uh, you know, one heart featureization, column matrix, gap based models, Right, uh, so these are the some of the featureizations that are available with the deep cam. So we'll discuss, you know, uh, in the data featureization methods in upcoming uh, recording. So now coming to the building your own uh, uh, the model architecture and uh, model evolution very easy. So all you need to you know use the deep cam matrix uh, function and import. The list of evaluation metrics that you want planning to do that uh, everything is in few lines of code classification or regression 
right? So even hyphen parameterization is uh, pretty easy. So you can see here in this example. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to you know provide our custom um, um, batch sizes, or learning our end filters, number of connected nodes. You know the user friendly. You can provide your own uh, and the custom model that inherits from Keras model. So, <laughs> right. So, in the current uh, example, so what we are trying to do is model has two hidden layers. Uh, sorry. Yeah. The model has two hidden layers, uh, 128 and um, uh, 64, respectively, and uses ReLU function, as you can see here. Uh, and coming to the uh, ReLU activation function and drop our regularization output layer as some sigmoid, uh, uh, you know, uh, activation function, which is suitable for binary classifications, right? So finally, now, once you load a data set, featureization then is building your own model set, uh, own uh, deep learning model. So in this example, uh, we're trying to, you know, load the data set, featureization, and then model using the specified uh, hyperparameters. And uh, we are trying to run the data set for number of uh, epochs. And during the uh, model, so it is trying to optimize, uh, uh, optimize to minimize the loss function and improve the performance of specific task. Right. OK, now coming to the model architecture. So I think it's repeated twice, sorry. OK, now next one is uh, the transfer learning. So we discussed about uh, loading data sets and featureization methods and um, you know defining your own custom uh, model uh, hyperparameters and tuning them. And the next one, we discussed about model metrics. And the next one is uh, the deep chem transfer learning is one of the you know uh, very useful features of uh, deep chem. So the deep chem enables the transfer learning by allowing, allowing you to train a model uh, on one data set and fine tune on the other and apply on the real data set. So here, this is one of the examples. So you can start uh, load a new user load. Uh, uh, you know, task define and transformers, and you can actually use the load slider and define your own data set to try and use the for transfer learning purpose and followed by use the data set to define as a transfer and try and validate data sets and use the fine tune using best model dot fit function and followed by evolute find, you know, fine tune the model. So by using best model dot evolute function, right? So that is about, uh, uh, you know, doing uh, uh, transfer learning. Next one is uh, integrating with articulate. So articulate and integrate, if you are planning planning to use articulate and deep chem and uh, planning to use some of the function from articulate and trying to use uh, some of the functions from deep chem. So it's one of the example. So here, what I'm trying to do is, I'm actually trying to import uh, uh, adequate uh, from adequate we're trying to import chem library and uh, from deep chem uh, we're trying to use featureization function especially uh, convolution more featureization so now use the adequate chem uh, package to you know read the smiles and convert into more and you know from deep chem we are trying to you apply the featureization convolutional more featureization and Try to define the featureization for model uh, mode one and uh, do the generation model generation and start predictions. Right? So, this is about integrating our decade. And coming to the next one, so these are the one of the, you know, one of the best practices and tips. Uh, which we are where we are planning to discuss um, how to use the deep game effectively for your project. And uh, so let's see by section by section, pre-processing and featureization. Always ensure your data is pre-processed and featureized appropriately for your you know objective, whether you are planning to use the graph-based models or whether you're planning to use convolutional models, or if you're planning to use a fingerprint-based uh, 
models are, you know, try to apply, try to pre-process your data set and define trying tests and validate and apply the right visualization, which is useful for your model generation and problem. The model selection, it offers a wide uh, range of models. Uh, uh, you know, uh, one of the, let me, you know, give you the brief idea about what, what type of uh, model architecture that is available with the uh, deep chem. So graph based models, so graph convolutional models, wave models, uh, you know, gap attention models. And similarly coming to the 3D structure based uh, models. Uh, so atomic convolutional models, voxel based models, and coming to the sequence based models, you can use the text, uh, uh, you know, use the one hot encoders to use a text-based CNN model, transform-based models like a BERT and GPT and other transformer uh, architectures and traditional machine learning models like random forest, support vectors and XEBoost and KERA. And also like you can also apply multitask functions, right? And the next one is hyperparameterization. So, okay, before we go into the next one, uh, so choose the right model that best fit for your problem and data size and small data set, random forest might work better and for the larger data sets, graph neural network. So it's all up to the user, which model that you, uh, you want to read and pre-process and visualization and select the models and hyperparameters, spend time on the hyperparameters definitions and optimization to get a best out of your models and, and like a, if you want to use the random search or grid search method that is provided by the deep game, try to apply and fine tune your hyperparameters. And model evolution, you have a, a you know a list of uh, uh, model evolution metrics are available with the deep game. Try to you know uh, explore them and apply and evaluate a model and make sure you re you got a best model and apply on the real time data. And transfer learning, as we discussed, so which is help you to improve the performance especially when you are, you know, dealing with the limited data, right? So, good. Finally, what is the summary? So, in this video, we cover the basics of DeepChem and uh, DeepChem installation by using PIP. And uh, we also discussed about the data loading and example code and featureization, model building and hyperparameter optimization, transfer learning, defining your custom models, integration with the adequate. We also discussed about um, the best practices and real-time world applications and community resources. So in the next step, we are going to, you know, uh, deep dive the deep time features by exploring the documentation and tutorials. And also don't hesitate to join the deep time forum and get to chat with and ask with, uh, you know, very uh, engaged with the deep time community, right? So if you have any questions or comments, and if you like the video, uh, please, please feel free to, you know, uh, comment and let me know your thoughts. And if you want to discuss more about any topic in the deep game, so uh, just leave your comment and I'll try to cover in the next video. So in upcoming video, we'll discuss about uh, deep game data, uh, data sets handling and, uh, you know, loading the custom data sets and then followed by video, we'll discuss about the featureization and one by one, we'll try to cover the deep, entire deep chem packages, right? Hope you like my video and thank you for your time and uh, looking forward to connect you again in the next video on the deep chem. Have a great day, bye.